Hi everybody, and welcome to Downloading Transactions into QuickBooks for Nonprofits and Charities. This is a little bit about ReadyTalk, which is the webinar tool that we will be using today. Um, you will all be silent. You should be able to hear me through your computers, mic, and speakers. If for some reason you do want to just call in and hear it over the phone, um, there is an alternate phone line that we will be able to give to you. Just let us know if you would like that. Um, because you are all muted today, you will need to ask any questions via the chat pane, and you should see that on your screen now. And so if you have any questions, comments, um, either about the ReadyTalk platform or about the content of the webinar, just uh, chat us in there and we'll be able to answer your question. And it's usually a little bit easier if you just go ahead and chat as opposed to just raising your hand. So if you have a question, don't feel the need to raise your hand. Just go ahead and chat us the question. And if you do lose your Internet connection, um, you can reconnect at any time using that link that you used to join for the first time. And if for some reason um, you are still having problems, you can call ReadyTalk Support at 800-843-9166. And just as a reminder, we are going to be recording today's webinar. And we will be posting the webinar both on the TechSoup um, website and on our YouTube page. We will, we will be sending out the recording as, long, as well as additional materials um, either later today or tomorrow. And so you will have those for your perusal if for some reason you need to leave early or you just want to review it later. So again, this is Downloading Transactions into QuickBooks for Nonprofits and Charities. My name is Kyla Hump. I am going to be your facilita facilitator today from the TechSoup end. And with us um, for the content piece is Greg Bossen from QuickBooks Made Easy. And also assisting with chat is TechSoup's Becky Wiegand. So you'll see her name pop up in the chat box. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Greg to get us started. Cool. Hey, hey, everybody, and thank you, Kyla. That was wonderful as usual. So uh, this is me. That's the picture of me, Greg Bosson. And um, I want to find out if anybody has heard me teach before. So just chat there, you know, yes, I've heard you, or no, I haven't, something like that, um, so that I can find out how many people have heard me teach before. Uh, I am a, uh, a CPA with an accounting practice, actually, in Atlanta. I specialize in nonprofits. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, so that's my southern accent coming out, although I don't think I have one. Other people do. Uh, let's see. Mary has heard me, so that's cool. Oh, this is good. I can see what you guys are saying, so that's awesome. I saw somebody say that they're your biggest fan. <laughs> oh, really? That's cool. All right, yeah. great. So I'm, I'm paid that person for that comment, so that works. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I uh, specialize in nonprofits, uh, and then I'm the owner, uh, the founder of QuickBooks Made Easy, and uh, we specialize in um, training uh, for specific industries. And uh, one of my biggest industries that I train in is nonprofits. Uh, I have training seminars live around the country, and as a matter of fact, here we go. Uh, this is a list of upcoming seminars. We actually have one next week in San Antonio, Texas that, yes, you can still sign up for. Uh, and then during the summer, I'm going to take some time off, and I'm also going to do a lot of uh, writing, uh, come up, um, coming up with new training products. Uh, and then uh, starting in the fall, we start again, and those are some of the cities that we're going to. Uh, so if you are in one of those cities, uh, I would recommend you come to the seminar and you can see me live. Of course, you've got to see whether I'm any good first. So we'll talk about how to sign up for live seminars and also how to get the training products uh, in a minute. So um, this is the agenda for today. Uh, and so uh, this is a little out of order. Uh, the second thing, which says benefits of downloading transactions, the second bullet, that's what we're going to do first. We're going to talk about why it's a good idea to download transactions. Uh, and then we're going to spend the majority of the time actually doing it. Um, so we'll be demoing all of the downloading of transactions, both for checking and for credit cards. And I'm really excited about this because um, I, I did teach this. I developed this class and taught it a couple of weeks ago for about 12 or 13 people. So this is the first time I'm um, teaching it, you know, on the big screen here. Um, so, uh, and I don't know that I've seen a class in this before, but yet so many people want to know how to download. So I'm excited about it. So anyway, so it says we're going to do questions at the end, but we'll do questions whenever, and whenever I feel like 
taking a break, I'll stop and I'll ask Kyla to ask me any questions, although I can kind of see people here. I can see what people are asking. No, I haven't taught in Vegas yet, um, but maybe I will do that. So anyway, let's get started here because we only have an hour. All right, so the first thing uh, that I wanted to cover is what the advantages are of downloading transactions. So and just so that you understand, what we're talking about here is instead of manually entering transactions, we're talking about from our online bank account or credit card account online, we're talking about downloading the transactions and importing them into QuickBooks. Obviously, it's much faster than manually entering the transactions. That's obvious, and so that's the main benefit of it. Uh, you don't have to sit and enter uh, each credit card transaction. You know, if you have uh, credit cards, I'm sure a lot of you do. Uh, that's a lot of individual transactions that you have to enter, and you probably end up not entering them individually. You probably end up waiting till the end of the month, entering them lumped by account or something. You know, you total up all the office supplies and add it together, and then total up all the. But it's still a pain. And then you're not really entering the transactions on the date they occurred. You're entering them at the end of the month when you get the statement, and so the timing is not really correct. So um, you can. Uh, it's obviously better than entering debit card transactions too. Uh, and those, those are important. Those are subtracting out of your bank account, and you don't find out about them until the end of the month when you get the bank statement. You know, if we lived in fantasy land, which some of us do, um, the person who has the debit card would be giving you the receipts every day. But of course, that only happens in fantasy land. So, anyway, then you don't really know what your bank account balance is because you don't have the debit card transactions entered. So it's nice to be able to download them. Uh, let's see. So another thing, and you might be wondering this, when you download a transaction, how does it know what expense account to put it to? Well, there's an auto recall feature within the downloading part of QuickBooks uh, that will remember, oh, the last time we downloaded a transaction from Office Depot, we put it to um, – you know, office supplies. So this one should go there too. So it's smart. It remembers this stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. So uh, when you download transactions, and you'll see this in a minute, it actually it'll download all the transactions, but it recognizes that some of the transactions have actually already been entered in QuickBooks. If you write checks in QuickBooks, a lot of us do write and print our checks out of QuickBooks. It's not going to enter those checks. Again, it's going to match them to ones that are already in QuickBooks. Um, and then it will give you the ability to add the transactions that have not matched. So we're going to do that. We're going to download, we're going to match some transactions, and we're going to add some ones that aren't matched. One thing that's really neat is you can actually point downloaded transactions to accounts receivable or accounts payables. Okay? So that's pretty cool. We'll do that too. And the best thing about it is it's free, usually. It's almost always free. All right? So those are the advantages. Uh, real quickly, uh, this is exactly what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we are going to show you how to set it up for the first time. And actually, uh, if anybody in here has already using download, down, already downloading transactions and they're here because they have questions about it, let me know that. Text me up and let me know that. Uh, no, I haven't been to St. Louis. Well, I've been, but not to teach. But I would do. I would go there as well. All right, so um, <clears throat> that was for Deanna. Uh, so first we're going to look at how to set it up the first time. Then we're going to show you how to download transactions. Then we're going to look at the downloaded transactions, and we're going to show you how to match the ones that have already been entered into QuickBooks. And then we're going to show you how to enter the other ones. We're going to look at dealing with something called the renaming rules, which I will explain to you when we get there. It's one of the more, um, let's see, fun parts, we'll say fun, uh, fun parts of dealing with downloading transactions. If you can work, if you, if you know, understand the renaming rules and can work with them, they're going to make life a lot, easy, a lot easier for you. And then I'll show you at the end how to turn off the feature in case you decide uh, that you need to. Uh, so <clears throat> Gloria says, is the line still on hold? So apparently she's not, uh, she's not um, being able to hear me. All right, okay. so, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. And so there might be a second delay, but you should be looking at QuickBooks right now. And I no longer can see chats. So um, uh, 
uh, Kyla, you'll have to talk to me if I need to know something. Just feel free sure. to interrupt me at any moment. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, all right. So the first thing that uh, I want to teach you is this is a surprise. This has nothing to do with downloading transactions, but it's something that I just found out recently, so I wanted to tell you about it. We are using version 2013 of QuickBooks. That's what you're seeing up on the screen. And those of you who have been using QuickBooks for a while, if you got version 2013, I'm sure you were upset because it doesn't look as pretty. Okay, now I had a big old long um, webinar on the changes, but um, one of the main things people didn't like is because it, it's it's not as pretty, it's not as colorful. This icon bar up here is in black, okay, and it's harder to read the icons because it's just kind of black and white. And people were complaining about it. In addition to that, the background of these toolbars here, and the title bar, and the home page bar is all in black. Well, everybody complained and complained and complained. So they just came out with a fix. Um, and once you download the fix, and, and that happens automatically, you have this new preference, and I'm going to show it to you, preferences. Uh, and it's under the desktop view preferences. And it says, it's this one right here, switch to colored icons, light background for the top icon bar. This is the top icon bar up here. So this is what it looks like initially, but if I click, click this, Ah, now it looks a little bit better. Isn't that kind of cool? Um, and then the other thing is if you don't like this black color, you can change it. Company file color scheme. I'll go to orange. Look at that. I don't think you would like that. <laughs> we'll do blue-green. I don't like that either. Uh, Blue-purple? Eh. We'll go back to the default. Sorry. All right. But anyway, so wasn't that cool? Kyla, are they commenting on that at all? Does anybody like that? I see no comments, but I think it's cool. No comments whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, not about that. We did have a couple of other questions. But. Not a very impressive <laughs> response there. But anyway, well, as long as me and you like it, that's all that really matters. All right. I did see one person said it's very cool. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank okay. you for the one yeah. person. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up. And, and again, what we're talking about, we're not talking about going to your bank account and downloading um, a transaction and then trying to figure out how to import it. This is fairly seamless. This downloading happens from within the QuickBooks program. Okay, So I'm in the QuickBooks program, and I'm, I'm telling you, this is exactly what you would do back at your office. And if you have an older version of QuickBooks, um, uh, you've been able to do this um, for a while now. So this is not a new feature. It's been around for years. All right. So what I'm going to do is, first thing you've got to do is you've got to set it up. And you set it up for each bank account on its own. Uh, so I'm going to go to Banking, and I'm going to go to Online Banking, and I'm going to go to Set Up Account for Online Services. So I'm going to click that button there. It has to close the other windows in order to do this. And the first thing that it wants to know, guys, is it wants to know which account in your chart of accounts list are you wanting to link to a bank account. Okay? But, so it gives you a choice of your bank accounts, but it also gives you a choice of credit card accounts. So, so you can download into a credit card account in QuickBooks as well. And look at this, other current liability. It will download into another current liability account, which means if you have a loan, equity line, mortgage, what have you, anything where you can get the information online, you can download into this other current liability if it's a loan. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going to do one. We're going to do it both for a checking account, and then we're going to do it for the American Express account. So first I'm going to do it for my checking account. So I click Checking. Click Next. Now, it wants to know the name of my bank. And look at all of the banks that are here. Look at all of this. All of these banks have um, gotten the uh, import coding documents from Intuit to enable them to write uh, an import file that will work with QuickBooks. All right? So um, just for fun, Kyla, uh, let me know. I want you guys out there in the world uh, mm -hmm. that are listening to me, if you know of a really small bank that you don't think is here, let Kyla know what it is, and she'll let me, and I'll check a couple of them. So tell me a bank that you're like, oh, I wonder if they have that bank. 
I'm watching to see if anybody has it. Um, okay, here we go. Home Federal Bank of Tennessee. Okay, Home Federal. Where is Home Federal Bank? C M I. Oh, there it is. Home Federal Bank of Tennessee. Okay, How about that? Up. And we'll do one more. Okay, let's do First Bank of Conroe. Okay. Oop. First Bank. There's probably a ton of First Banks. <laughs> First Bank in, so it's after that, of? Of Conroe, C-O-N-R-O-E. Oh, wow. Okay, that person wins. <laughs> this was not in here. Where in it's, the heck is Conroe? It's in Texas. It's outside of Houston, I think. That's, that's interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it's interesting. Anyway, all right, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I like to help as many people as possible. So I'm picking a tiny little bank called Wells Fargo. All right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and what we're literally going to do, guys, is I'm going to walk you through the process, which means we're going to be going to the Wells Fargo website. You do it through the program, and that's where you create the link. But I, I really want you to experience this like it'll really happen. So, I'm going to click Wells Fargo, and I'm going to click next. And then uh, it's doing a little bit of updating the information about the financial institution. Now, there's something we need to talk about. So there are two methods that we can do this. We can do it direct connect or web connect. All right? So the, both of them will allow you to download transactions. Okay? The difference between the direct connect versus web connect is that the direct connect you, once you go to the website first of your bank, and you're, we're going to go through there in a second to do the original link, you don't have to go into your uh, bank's website anymore. Anytime uh, you want to download transactions, you simply push a button and it goes to the website, puts in your passcode and username, and downloads all the transactions that occurred since the last time you downloaded. And that's pretty cool. Um, the problem with the Direct Connect is that it costs money. Um, and as a matter of fact, it can cost like ten, fifteen, twenty dollars a month to do this. Now you do get other features when you do this. Um, oh, by the way, that that money that you pay, ten, fifteen dollars a month, it goes to the bank. It does not go to QuickBooks. So it has to do with whatever the bank wants to charge for this. Um, but there is an advantage in addition to downloading transactions, you can upload transactions. In other words, you can write a check, push it, and, and not print it, but rather send it through the Internet to the bank, and they'll print the check and send it out to the vendor. So you can upload transactions too. But this costs money, and I'm cheap. And to be honest with you, going to the website to download transactions through QuickBooks is real quick and easy. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to go with this Web Connect one because it's free. All right? So that's what I do, and that's what most of my clients do. So Web Connect, it is free. You can't upload transactions, but you can download. All right? So I'm going to click the Web Connect. I'm going to click Next. And so it's explaining that we got to go to finish the setup, we have to go to the bank's website. Okay? So, and we would have to have done this even if we did the direct connect. It's just that we'll need to go to the website each time because we're doing the free one. So you click it, and first thing that's going to happen is these help windows pop up because I know people have a lot of questions about this, but since you're taking the seminar, you don't need that because you have me. So, um, and where we are now is we are in the Wells Fargo website. Do you recognize it? So, um, and so whatever your bank is, you'll go there and you'll recognize your bank's uh, website. And you put in your username and your password. Now, what I'm going to do here is I don't want you to know my username or my password, uh, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And it'll go back to the slides. Kyla, did that work? Yes, it did. Good. All right. And I'm putting in my username and my password. Whoops. I don't know how to type. All right. Okay, so I'm signing on to my site. And so now I'm on my site, so I'm going to start sharing again. All right. A little bit of a delay, and then you should be good. 
good to go. Yeah. So um, now you can see my bank accounts. I'm kind of trying to hide the balances here because this is actually, well, it's an account that we don't really use anymore. But anyway, so I'm going to click my business account. And then, and this is where you need to understand your own uh, bank's website because you've got to figure out where to go to get to where the downloaded transactions are. Now, I picked Wells Fargo because a lot of people have that. And um, I'm just going to scroll right over here and scroll down a little bit, and you will see all these individual transactions. But at the top, you see download activity. Now, it may be in a different place for you, but um, this is where it is in the transaction area on uh, at the Wells Fargo site. So I'm going to click Download Activity. All right. So now what you're going to see, and this is, again, it might be different. You know, the screens might look a little different depending upon what bank you're at. But um, one of the neat things about the Web Connect, is rather than doing this directly but doing it the free way, the Web Connect, is that you can pick and choose what time period you want. So I'm going to download transactions from February the 1st to February the 10th. Now, you can download transactions for many um, for more than just 10 days. Um, it looks to me like in Wells Fargo land, you can do 18 months at a time. So that's, and this is something where you would probably go in and once a month or once a week or once every two weeks you download transactions. And if you've, when you go in and put a date range, if you forget the last time you downloaded, so you just kind of maybe re-download some of the older transactions, it's not going to do that. In other words, if you pick an older date the second time you come in, and you say, well, now the second time I download, I want to do 2-1 through 228. Well, all the old transactions that are already downloaded, it won't download them again. It only downloads once. All right, So you don't have to worry about remembering the date range that you picked each time. So anyway, so then um, you pick the file format, and I did see somebody out there that was downloading into Quicken. It works a little different in QuickBooks, but apparently in Wells Fargo land you can download into Quicken, but we want to download into QuickBooks. And let me tell you something. The first time that I went into this screen when I signed up for this, QuickBooks wasn't an option. And so I was like, well, I understand. So I called Wells Fargo, the online tech support, and they just turned a switch on, and in two seconds it appeared. So I had to sign out and sign back in again. But so, And then it was there forever. So if for some reason QuickBooks isn't turned on in, with your bank's website, then you'll, you may need to call them. But that's not a reason not to download. I mean, it's still pretty easy to do this. Once it's on, it's on. It only took a couple minutes. So I'm going to click QuickBooks right here. Oh, notice how there's two QuickBooks. There's one that says um, IIF. Don't use that one. That's for really old files. Uh, use the one that says Web Connect. That's the one you're supposed to use. So I'm going to click Download. And then what it's doing is it has downloaded a file. All right? It's a, it's a file, and it wants to know, and the file has the transactions in it. it you could probably look at it. It's like a CSV file almost. You could probably open it up in Excel and look at it if you wanted to go crazy, but actually I'm not sure that that's true. <laughs> I like to say things that I don't know are true all the time. But anyway, so um, we could either save the file, which seems kind of ridiculous. Instead, we want to open the file. And by opening the file, it's going to open all the individual transactions, and it's going to attempt to place them within your QuickBooks file. Now, it's going to give you one more shot at maybe saving it and doing it later if you if you want to. But no, I'm going to import the transactions now, uh, and I'll just uncheck this so it, I'll, this window will go away. There's not really a need for this window anyway, but they're just giving you another chance to save it. But we just want to import them now. I'm going to click OK. Now, if you're not listening, listen to me, because this is where people make a mistake the first time they go in here without training. What people do is it, it wants to know where you want the transactions to be imported to. In other words, which account in your chart of accounts list. Now, I, under, I know you may be – remember a few minutes ago we told it which bank account we wanted to download into, but for some reason it's asking us again here. And one of the options is create a new QuickBooks bank account and it gives you a name that you can change. And people do this all the time. They pick this one. And then what happens is it creates a bank account, and it downloads the transactions to that bank account. So then when you go into your chart of accounts list, 
I can't get to it from here. But when you go into your chart of accounts list, you'll have two bank accounts, the one that you've been using all these years and then a new one with the downloaded transactions. And so then you have to merge the two into the same account, and then you end up losing all your old bank credit. It's a big mess. So don't do that. So instead, what I want you to do is click Use an Existing QuickBooks Account, and then you get your drop-down list of your bank accounts here. Here's the checking account. And we click Continue. All right. So let me just – there. Your WebConnect data has been successfully read into QuickBooks. You can view the data uh, on, by going to the Online Banking Center. All right. So we are done. Um, we could go into the Online Banking Center right now, but, uh, and if you do that, um, or, or we can go into it later. So I'm, I'm going to exit out of this screen. I'm done. Everything's finished. Um, but what it's doing is it's gone into – this is what, what this is called is the uh, Online Banking Center. Okay? Now, we'll come back to this in a second, but what I wanted to explain to you is uh, the transactions are here, and we are going to add them in to QuickBooks. They're here, but they're not completely in QuickBooks yet. Um, I can escape out of this window and just go back into my regular old QuickBooks, go home for the day, and then whenever I wanted to actually put the transactions in QuickBooks, in other words, finish the process, I go to Banking, Online Banking, Online Banking Center, and I end up back at that other window. I didn't mention this before. The Online Banking Center can be viewed in two ways. One is side-by-side and the other is up and down. Uh, the up and down method uh, was around for years. And if you choose that method, what that means is you, you see for whatever bank account you're downloading, downloading into, you see the register at the top, and then at the bottom you have a list of your downloaded transactions, and you try and take them from the bottom and place them into the top. In the newer versions of QuickBooks 2009 and after, you have a side-by-side -side mode where all your downloaded transactions appear on the left side of the screen screen, and then on the right side of the screen, screen you manually you put them into QuickBooks um, by moving them to the right side of the screen. So uh, we're going to use the side-by-side -side mode. That's what most people use. I'm going to click Do Not Display the Message in the Future, so I'm not even going to be given the choice anymore. I like the side-by-side -side mode. So I click Continue. All right. So now we are at the point where uh, we will finish entering the transactions that we've downloaded into QuickBooks. So I'm going to stop for just a second uh, and see who has questions about setting this thing up. So Kyla, do you want to – does anybody sure. have any questions for me? Yeah, there have been um, a bunch of questions. Um, okay. there, there were uh, quite a few questions at the beginning just to people wanting to verify if this works in versions before 2013. Yeah, and I mentioned this, I mentioned it, but I'll say it again. I'm mm -hmm. using version 2013, but it's it works in all the versions of QuickBooks. It's worked for years. You've been able to download question uh, download uh, transactions for years. So it's not a new feature by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, great. And um, we have some questions. Does it do does it handle credit unions and then specifically Canadian credit unions? Does it handle any any bank that is on that list, it will handle. Okay. So, and yes, there are tons of credit unions that it lists. So that person who wants to know about a Canadian bank, mm -hmm. we should probably go back and see whether or not uh, it's on that list. And even if it's not on the list, there's still manual ways of getting an import file. You want to talk to the bank about it uh, just to see whether or not they create a file that works with QuickBooks. But it's kind of a question for the bank if we don't see it on the list. So we'll look and see in a minute. Okay, and that's, that's basically what you would um, – because we did have a couple of questions asking um, what to do if, that, if their bank is not on the list. So you would just talk to the, talk to the bank? Yeah, you want to call the bank, um, and okay. they will know whether or not they have an import file that's co uh, that is um, compatible with QuickBooks. And then what you would need to do is manually uh, – you'll have to download it and then go to File, Utilities, Import. And then if they give it to you in an II format, the bank does, you'll click here. If they give it to you in a WebConnect format, you'd click here. So rather than using the features that we're using, you still can do it through this utilities. Okay. But you've got to make sure the banks, you know, 
works with QuickBooks. Okay, right. next question. Um, is WebConnect free even from Wells Fargo? We just had a few questions about you know, verifying is WebConnect free? It's or, free. Yeah. Web, okay. WebConnect versus Direct Connect is the one where they charge you a monthly fee. The benefit is you can upload transactions, and also you don't need to go to the website after the first time. It just downloads from the last time you picked the download. Mm -hmm. That's Direct Connect. That costs money. And but that's not what I'm teaching, and that's not what I'm recommending. I'm recommending WebConnect, and WebConnect is free for Wells Fargo, definitely. It's free for almost all the banks out there. I don't know of a bank that it's not free for. Okay. okay. And we had two people asking the difference between QuickBooks Online um, to just QuickBooks. Well, the online version of QuickBooks does have the ability to download transactions as well, um, mm -hmm. but I am – I haven't looked at that. I don't know how different it is from this one. I wouldn't imagine it's very much different. Um, but uh, the program itself, the online edition, is very different than the desktop version of QuickBooks. Uh, it's not as well. They're making right. it better. <laughs> okay. We'll do, do one know, more question. Um, off the top of your head, do you know which file format you would use for QuickBooks Online? Because somebody had asked that. No, I don't. No. I don't. Okay. So that if you have a question like that, um, make sure that you ask me. Uh, and I'm going to put my contact information up at the get, up at the end. But I have um, we have a pretty vibrant Facebook situation going on these days, uh, and so um, I encourage you to find me on Facebook and uh, friend me, and uh, and then ask me the question there. I'll be glad to answer you. Okay. So let's let's go on because all we've done at this point is we've gotten 13 transactions, um, but we want to add them into QuickBooks. All right? So this is where things get kind of interesting. So i got to see the transactions. Where are they, right? Uh, so I could either click on the number 13 to get them, or I could click on Checking, or I could click Add Transactions to QuickBooks and click Checking. Any of the three of those, when I click it, it's going to open up this side-by-side -side window that I was talking about. So what we have here is we have a left side, and a right side of the window. So the left side of the window has all the transactions. There are 13 of them to be reviewed and added into QuickBooks. And they're going to break the whatever you have. In this case, we only have 13. Um, you could have 100. You could have 5,000. Um, but anyway, they break it into three different groups. There are certain transactions, five to be exact, of the 13 that QuickBooks has found a match for. In other words, the system says, you know what, five of the transactions of this 13, I think they've already been entered into QuickBooks. Um, now, it doesn't show you those uh, matched transactions, but if you click the word show here, and I'm going to do it, it shows you the five matched transactions. And there they are right here. Um, then there is, at the bottom, unmatched transactions, eight of them. Those are transactions that it downloaded that it doesn't see in QuickBooks because you didn't enter it probably. Okay? And we'll show you how to enter those. And then there's this third option in the middle. And in this particular file, we don't have any yet. New transactions created using renaming rules. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it in a second, okay? You'll understand this turns out to be one of the most powerful parts of downloading transactions, but we're going to worry about it in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is I want you to think about this like a game. It's a game. And the name of the game is we got 13 things over here. We want to make sure they're all in QuickBooks, and we want this to go to zero. In other words, we want to get rid of all 13 of these, and then we know that our QuickBooks will ma basically match the bank because all the download transactions will have been entered. Okay? So that's the game. We want to get this to go to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first matched transaction. And a matched transaction, again, is a transaction that it thinks, the system thinks, is already in your data file. Okay? So here's the first one. I'm clicked on it. If I click on this one, it'll go to that one. But we're going to click on the first one here, check number 5405 for $1,630.06. Now, the system is smart, and it found in QuickBooks, in your data file, or in the data file here, it found a check number 5405 in the same amount. Okay, So it's thinking this must 
be that. And it's asking you, is this a match or is this not a match? Now, I'm going to say it's a match. So when I say it's a match, I'm going to click it. But when I click it, I want you to look over here. You see how we have 13 over here? I'm going to click Confirm the Match. goes down to 12. So we've started our game. The game is to remove the things off of here by either matching them to QuickBooks or adding them in. Okay? So here is another transaction uh, that it's found a match for. Uh, this uh, was some sort of a draft that went out of the bank account. We had already entered it in, and here it is coming uh, out of the bank account. Uh, so there's the downloaded transaction. Here it is in QuickBooks. I'll confirm the match. Okay. Now, let me tell you something, guys. When this program, when once you start using this thing, it's going to start matching a ton of transactions for you. We only had five, but it's going to match a ton of them. So rather than confirming them individually, you can confirm them as a group by clicking Add Multiple. So if I click Add Multiple, it's going to give me um, all those transactions that are left. Uh, the unmatched ones will be up here, but the matched ones is what I want to look at. They're down here. So these three other ones are matched. In other words, they've already been found in QuickBooks. So, and they're checked off. And so what I'm going to do is by clicking Add Selected, there it goes. It matched all three of them, so now all three of those are gone. So now we're down to eight. Okay? So those are transactions that QuickBooks has already uh, confirmed. Uh, that are in QuickBooks, and I just confirmed the match for sure. And, and now we're, what we're left with is eight transactions that need to be reviewed. Now, it's saying they're unmatched, and it says that they need to be added to QuickBooks. That may not be the case. Sometimes the system doesn't recognize that the transaction has already been entered into QuickBooks. All right? And so, uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to manually connect one of the transactions over here with QuickBooks. All right, uh, and we're going to do it for expenses. In other words, money going out. Okay, so here is a check for forty-two dollars and sixty-seven cents. At least it's showing as a check in on uh, the downloaded transaction pane here on the left. Okay, now. I don't want to enter it. It's just suggesting I enter it. But I don't want to enter it here. I'm going to click More Matching Options. And when it comes to an expense, one of the things you can do is you can just enter it, record as an expense. Or you can, all the way at the bottom here, Match to an Existing QuickBooks Transaction. So I'm going to click that. And then what we're going to have here is it's showing me the downloaded transaction, and then it's going to give me a list. Now here it's just giving me all the transactions as of the last 30 days. But I'm going to tell it to show all, because it didn't appear in the last 30 days. So I'm going to click Show All. And then it's going to give me all the transactions here that um, possibly uh, that have entered, that have been recorded in the bank account, and I can look for this forty-two dollars and sixty-seven cents. Now I can look for it by scrolling up and down, but I can also click on the tops of these titles. So if I click on payment, it's going to be sorted by dollar amount from the lowest to the greatest. So real quickly, I can see, oh look, there's a forty-two sixty-seven, and then you can kind of what would happen in real life is you say, oh yeah, I remember they. Uh, they recorded as a check, but I had recorded as a journal entry or something like that because it wasn't literally a check or what have you, for whatever reason. So I'm going to click on that one. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, Confirm Manual Match. So I'm going to click it. Now we're down to 7. So that's how you can manually uh, look for transactions that really are already in there. It's just that QuickBooks didn't catch it. All right. So uh, now another thing that's kind of cool is if you enter bills in QuickBooks and then you pay the bills online, that's what happened with this uh, check right here. Uh, this check is actually for scan to scan an energy. Um, not sure why the description is Bank of America here. You know, you get the downloaded transactions have all kinds of weird things in the description fields that happens from time to time, and that's one of the reasons why um, sometimes it won't find a match. But when one exists, but in this case, 
we paid this. We paid it's Scana Energy. It's it's a, a gas company, and we paid them maybe with a bank check. So that's why it says Bank of America. Uh, but we didn't record it in QuickBooks. But we had entered a bill for it. So if you enter bills, you can actually match these to outstanding bills. I'm going to click More Matching Options. I'm going to click Select Open Bills in QuickBooks. I'm going to type the name of the vendor that this this transaction relates to, Scana Energy, press the Tab button, and it will give me a list of outstanding bills. So I'll check off this one, and I will click Add to QuickBooks. So what this is doing is it's adding this check into QuickBooks, and it's telling QuickBooks that it has to do with this bill, and it's reducing the bill. So I'm going to click it. Now we're down to six. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So the next one that we see up here coming out of the bank, we're going to handle the deposit at the end, so mainly I'm just going to do the expenses right now. Bank card. This is uh, something that it can't find a match for, and this is actually my Visa uh, merchant fee. All right? So this is the first time I'm going to teach you how to actually enter a transaction, because the rest of these I matched, either manually or automatically or against a bill. This is the first time I'm going to show you how to just enter something. So this is, and this happens a lot, this is a draft that comes out for the merchant fee. So what it's going to do is it's going to allow me to basically record the transaction in QuickBooks right here. All right, uh, just like I was doing it on, a, just like I was going to do it on a right check window. As a matter of fact, the payee links to the names lists in QuickBooks, like the vendor list, and you'll see down here somewhere I have Visa Bank Card Center. Okay, and then it wants to know the account to point it to. Okay, so um, I'm going to pick. Uh, let's see, I'll just pick bank service charges. All right. Notice what's missing here. Um, say I wanted to enter it to a class. There's no place to enter a class here. So, Kyla, I'm going to ask a question. You guys, um, what would I push to get the class feature to show up? See if anybody knows how to make that show up. If you know, go ahead and type that into the chat pane. Yes, I want to see. Michelle says show split. Yes. If yeah. you click this thing right here, then all of a sudden the information that you're used to seeing in the right checks window or on the inner bills window appears, and you can point it to a class, and we'll point it to the administrative class. Uh, in another uh, webinar that I cover, uh, we talk about how you can use the customer job field to track uh, grants, restricted grants, and you could use this for that. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to click Add to QuickBooks. Now when I click Add to QuickBooks, a warning pops up. Not a warning. Renaming Rule Created. So listen very carefully, guys, because this is the, one of the most important things of this hour. Okay? It says, all future downloaded transaction from this downloaded payee will be renamed to Visa Bank Card Center. What are they talking about? What they're talking about is that import file from Wells Fargo, the downloaded payee name was bank card. Okay? And so it's saying all future transactions from that payee, bank card, are going to be renamed Visa Bank Card Center. In other words, it's basically saying anytime I get a download transaction that says bank card, I'm going to assume that you mean Visa Bank Card Center, and that's the vendor name I'm going to point to the transaction. This becomes really important because now an additional thing that QuickBooks does is that once it knows the vendor name, it says, well, the last time there was a transaction that was pointed to Visa Bank Card Center, it went for uh, credit card fees and, uh, or, and actually bank charges. So it's going to remember that, and it's going to automatically put the account. So this is that auto recall that I was talking about. But it, it's, it's connected to this renaming rule. So in other words, you download the transaction from Bank Card, 
It created a renaming uh, rule, said, okay, we're going to point it to Visa Bank Card Center in the future, and oh, by the way, Visa Bank Card Center always goes to the bank service charge account. So I'm going to click OK. Now, notice what happened. I should have shown this to you before. There was an additional transaction to Bank Card in the downloaded uh, transactions uh, list on the left. And now it's been put here, New Transaction Created Using Renaming Rules. So I'm going to show it. So basically, there was an additional Visa Bank Card Center download. And so when I click on it, it's assuming it was downloaded as Bank Card. It's using that renaming rule, changing it to Visa Bank Card Center in the vendor list, and then remembering that it goes to bank charges. So if you've got a lot of – this is really helpful with credit cards, by the way, but debit cards too. If you keep charging to the same place over and over again, it's going to automatically remember this stuff, and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, make the process of getting these transactions in QuickBooks very quick. I'm going to show you that. It's going to be more obvious when we do the uh, credit card thing. So um, Now, one thing that it doesn't remember, and this is kind of a downfall, is it doesn't remember the class. It remembers the account, but not the class. So you've still got to push the clear spit, splits and put the class in each time. But I'll click Add to QuickBooks. Great. So now we're down to three. So uh, we've got two checks and an IRS. So I'm just going to add those in real quick. Um, and uh, while I'm doing that, uh, who has questions? Go ahead and let me know if you have questions. Okay, great. Um, we just had a question asking if QuickBooks still has a limitation on the number of customer and vendor names. Um, uh, okay. Yes, there's a limitation of 14,500 in the premier nonprofit edition of customer and vendor names. Okay. Next, anybody else got a question? Um, oh yeah, we have a bunch of questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> does the um, enterprise version of QuickBooks, is, is it the same process for that? Yeah, it works the same place okay. in the enterprise. I'm going to okay. stop you now, Kyla, because there's a sure. couple more things I want to teach. I see that we're getting close to the end. Sure, no um, problem. I'm going to leave these two checks here, but what I would want you to do is enter both of them. You want this down to zero, okay? And I'm going to go to the deposits. Now, when it comes to deposits that it can't match, uh, what it's going to want you to do is record a deposit. It's going to want you to record a deposit if it can't match it. But I'm going to click More Matching Options. Just like with expenses, you have an option there that says Match to Existing QuickBooks Transaction and then you can pick Show All, and you can look through all the deposits to see if you can find one. Okay? Now, the other thing is if you are going to record a deposit in QuickBooks, you can record it as a deposit by using this section down here. But if you're the type of person who enters uh, invoices in QuickBooks and then receives payments against them, then you can point this deposit against a payment that's sitting in undeposited funds. Finally, if you use sales receipts to enter your donations, then those automatically go to undeposited funds as well. And then when the deposit hits, you can point them against uh, the sales receipt. Uh, you can also point against invoices directly. If you invoice, but you don't ever bother telling QuickBooks when the payment's been received because you don't know it, it just kind of hits the bank, then you can point a payment directly to an invoice. So, and here's one, and here's an invoice, and these two go together. So I'm going to link them and click Add to QuickBooks. Okay. So I'm going to do one more thing. I just want to show you. Um, so again, the goal is to get to zero, but I'm going to click Finish this later. I'm going to sign up for American Express now, and this will just take a second. And actually, um, well, yeah, I'm going to walk you through this. Set up account for online services. I'm going to do it for a credit card now. So I'll do it for my American Express card. And uh, American Express. And American Express right there. We click Next. Uh, I'm going to do the Web Connect again. Click Next. And go to the website. You get the two questions. So it works the same for credit cards as it does for debit. And transactions here. You can pick in American Express land. They downloaded all these. You want to pick QuickBooks. 
and then you want to pick your time period. I'm going to do this card, uh, and I'll do it from April the 27th to the present. And then I'm going to pick Download. It's going to download the file. I'm going to open it. And it's going to ask me once again uh, what account I want to point it to. I'll point it to the American Express account that I created in QuickBooks. And then uh, the Online Banking Center now has two accounts. I'm going to go to the American Express Web Connect, and there's 29 transactions. So I'm going to click them. Here's the 29 transactions. None of them have been um, None of them have, are matched. So the last thing, this is, and then I'll stop and take questions. So again, you do the same thing. You would just go down here, entering all of these. But I'm going to click on the description column, and I'm going to let you see that uh, we'll just do USPS. We have one, two, three, four, five transactions to the Postal Service. So watch what happens here. USPS, and this is important, guys. So I'm going to click at it, and I'm going to point it to Postage and Delivery, and I'll point it to a class. Click Add to QuickBooks. Now it's going to create a renaming rule. It's going to say anytime it sees this USPS.com, blah, 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 it's going to assume that it's USPS. So what that should mean is that these other four transactions should automatically be renamed. And when I click OK, they aren't. They're still there. And here's why. And you may find this problem a lot. You think that you've told, well, whenever you see USPS, make it go to USPS, and it doesn't seem to remember. It has to do with the renaming rules. So I'm going to click Renaming Rules, and you click this. You can click it at any time, and it gives you a list for, of every single uh, vendor and what the renaming words, rules for, are for that vendor. USPS, the renaming rule here is USPS.com space click Washington. That's very detailed. If you look at the transaction here, let me close out of here for a second. It's, oh, you can see it right there. There's actually numbers right here. But when it made the renaming rule, it dumped the numbers. And it did it because it was trying to help us because it thinks, well, we don't want numbers every single time because one USPS, even though it's USPS.com, the numbers might be different each time. I know if you go to um, a gas station like Shell, and then you go to a different Shell gas station. To you, it still goes to gasoline expense, but the downloaded name will have a different store number on it. So they're trying to help us here by removing the numbers. But since the numbers were in the middle of the word, now it doesn't recognize this. So what you want to do in these cases is you want to, right here, you can change it. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to get rid of all these other words and just say as long as it says USPS, Dot com, uh, it's going to recognize it. So I'm going to click Save, and then I'll close it, and now all four of them have moved. You see? So now I can just show them all, and uh, I can add multiples. Uh, wait, it didn't. Where are they? Show. Four new transactions, right. I'll click Add Multiples, and then there they are renamed. They're up here. Okay? And the last thing I'll say is when it comes to credit cards, rather than entering each one individually, you can just go through here and assign them on the fly. Like that. And do it for each one of them, and then you click Add Selected. And I'll just click OK there. And boom, I've already got it down to 23. And let me tell you something, guys. Once you've been using this credit card one for a little bit, it's going to remember where everything goes, and there will be very few that are unmatched. It's going to make life a lot easier for you. Um, the other thing that's neat about using this is it makes your bank recs really easy. You still have to do bank recs, by the way. Um, the transactions that have been entered, I'm going to get out of here, you'll see them in your register. 
Uh, by the way, any account that is set up for online banking will have this the, the, this lightning bolt on it. So we have these two accounts set up for online banking. And when I double-click on them, uh, this column here, which is usually where uh, you would check off a transaction or a transaction gets checked off when it's cleared the bank. See, I hadn't cleared the bank yet. It's been downloaded, though. So once you go through a bank rec and check off in a bank rec, then this lightning bolt will change to a check. Um, a check, a little check like that. So, but it makes doing the bank recs easier because all the transactions, particularly for the credit card account, they're downloaded as of the date they actually occur. So it makes doing bank recs real quick, uh, credit card recs anyway, real, real, real quick. Um, if you want to turn off the feature, uh, you edit an account from the chart of accounts list, and anything that's been set up for online banking, you will see another tab here called Online Services and we'll click it, and then you can click Deactivate. So let's, um, and then that removes it. Let's go ahead and uh, use the rest of the time to take some questions. Uh, and while we're doing that, I'm going to um, come back to the slide here. Sure. Okay. So I know we only have a few minutes. Um, well, maybe I'll do this, Kyla. You tell mm -hmm. me if I'm missing something. So. Um, this is, uh, these are two places to go um, to uh, uh, get more information. Uh, my product, and I'm going to give you a little discount coupon in a second for my training products that you can sign up for, uh, and also live seminars and also technical support. But uh, we have a training product called uh, The Essentials, and it's listed at the TechSoup site. You can get it at TechSoup, and that's the link for it. And uh, this is where to go to get QuickBooks, I assume, correct? Yep, that's right. That's All right. Else. All right. And then uh, questions. Let's do a couple of questions. Sure. Um, we had one person who is asking. Oh, it's, is what? it worth upgrading from 12 to 13? Not necessarily. Um, but you can, I mean, the program only gets better. It doesn't get worse. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to upgrade every year. Okay. Um, what happens if you have two checking accounts in your QuickBooks? You can you, you then you would go in and set up a second checking account um, okay. for online banking. You don't have to just set up one. You can set up multiples. You just go back through the process, and you set up a second bank account. You can set up as many as you want. Okay. And do you know if QuickBooks can download from PayPal? Uh, can QuickBooks download from PayPal? You know, I don't. There is a download feature. I don't know it's with, it's, it's, if it's through the Online Banking Center or not, but I'll check while we're talking. What's the next question? Um, as a non-for-profit, most transactions are donation deposits. How would the deposits show up on the statement without first manually entering them in QuickBooks to create the deposit? How would it save that step? Oh, I see. Oh, that's a really good question. If you entered it as a, if you if you just matched it to an outstanding invoice, I guess, mm -hmm. um, does it show up as a sales receipt or does it show up as a journal entry? And I don't know the answer to that question. That person should find me on Facebook and ask me because I need to know the answer to that. Okay, and I don't and see actually, a PayPal. I don't see PayPal as an option um, here. Uh, I believe that uh, PayPal may have some sort of an import feature, but I don't see it through QuickBooks. So what we did today wouldn't necessarily work for PayPal. Okay. okay. Um, and just so everybody knows, um, for one, if for some reason we did not get to your question today, um, go ahead, find Greg. I will be sending out all that contact information and the coupon codes in the follow-up email that should go out later today or tomorrow. And then just as a reminder, um, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit organization just like so many of you out there. And we are working towards the day when every uh, nonprofit, library, and social benefit organization has the, um, what they need to fulfill their own mission. And I just want to do a couple of really quick thank yous. Um, I want to thank ReadyTalk for their webinar support. I want to thank Greg and QuickBooks Made Easy for this fabulous webinar today. And of course, I want to thank Becky on the back end um, for supporting me with chat. Um, and of course, I want to thank all of you for your time. Um, I know that your time is precious, and I really do appreciate you joining us today. Um, 
And if you could just take two minutes to fill out the survey that should pop up at the end of the webinar, um, I would greatly appreciate it. It really does help us in um, creating better and more webinars in the future. So again, thank you everybody. Thank you, Greg. And I hope everybody has a great day. Cool.